Lengthen up, pull the belly button to the spine, tucking your tailbone under, and try not to flare out your ribs. Feel like your ribs are coming down to your hips. So you've created a nice solid uh, anchor there. Your shoulders down your back pockets, a little orange underneath your, uh, underneath your chin. All these rules apply. I mean, it lengthened up. Whatever position you're in, remember the rules of Pilates. So we're just gonna do a couple shoulder rolls today. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, open up your chest. Couple backwards and then forwards. Imagine that pencil shoots out from the side of your shoulders. Big circle and back to center. Squeezing your shoulder blades together. Pilates stance, we'll do a few arm circles. You're gonna lengthen your arms over your head. Pilates stance, squeezing your shoulder blades together, open up your chest, keep those arms nice and lengthened. A little bit of tension in the band just helps you open up your chest. Only if you want to, you can come up onto your tiptoes, down to the soles of your feet. Keep length and length and squeezing your shoulder blades together. Or you can stay on your tiptoes, really challenging your balance. Focus on the point out in front. Squeeze your glutes, pulling your belly button to the spine. We're just going to do one more. Keep those arms lengthened behind you. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Interlace your fingers and lengthen your, keep your plate stance actually, lengthen your arms down your back, squeezing your palms together if you can, interlacing your fingers. And we're just going to stretch out the neck, so tilt your head to the right, being pulled by a piece of string, feeling nice deep stretching the neck and on the top of the shoulders, squeezing my shoulder blades together and over to the left. Squeezing my shoulder blades together, lengthening my arms down my back. Palms squeeze together, and back to centre. Bring your arms in front. We're going to do a roll down. So Pilates stance again. We're holding on to our hips. Nice straight back. Remember, keep that straight back with those with lumbar spine issues. I'm being pulled by a piece of string from the crown of the head. Lights coming out my tailbone. Micro bend in the knees. Lengthen, lengthen. Now those with spinal issues, just hold on to your thighs. And the rest of us rounding curl. Hold on to your left thigh, those with spine issues. Take a breath in as you breathe out, lengthen your right arm out to the side. So straight back, you like that. Lengthen, lengthen, rotation of your upper spine and lengthen, lengthen back center. Remember you're in Pilates stance if you can and lengthen your left arm out to the side, up to the ceiling. Pushing into your heels, tailbone up to the ceiling and lengthen back to center. Let the top of the body hang and slowly seek out your spine and restack your spine one vertebrae at a time. And back to center. Regular stance, or you can glue your ankles together as we come up into mountain. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, lengthen your arms. Lengthen, lengthen. Prayer. Prayer your hands together, arms in line with your ears. I'm on my tiptoes now, squeezing my ankles together. Back to mountain in between two panes of glass. Back to prayer. Come down to the soles of your feet. We're going to do a little bit of spinal extension now. Squeeze the glutes, pull your belly button spine. Just come to a point, that's good for you. Can you see I'm extending my spine? But you might do a little extension or a little bit deeper. Lengthen, lengthen. And back to centre. We're going to do a little bit of balance. So lengthen your arms away from each other. Have the band as slack as tight as you want. Remember, we don't lean, our shoulders are in our back pockets. Don't lean forward like that. Stay this 180 degrees, one straight line. Take a little bit of pressure out your big toe. Rest whenever you like and come into back into position. So you might be able to come a little bit deeper or you might be able to come all the way to T. Keep the hips square. Lengthen the arms away from each other. Rest whenever you like. Nice straight line. Total stability and lengthen back to centre. Nice deep stretch for your work in your quads. We'll do the other side. Working your core really hard to balance there. Lengthen. So I'm trying to keep my arm in line with my ear. My left hand lengthen down my thigh. So you might come here a little bit deeper. You might be able to come all the way to T. Keep those hips square. Rest whenever you like and come back into position. It's all about complete stability. 
Focus on a point out in front really helps with your stability. Oops. And back to centre. And just shake it out, drop the band. We're going to have a wider stance, now just wider than hip width apart. Lengthen your arm up to the ceiling. Hold on to your hip, level one, level two, or you can come over to the side, level three. Puts more pressure on your lumbar spine. Choose the level that's good for you. And you lengthen over to the right. Stick out that hip if you can, micro bend in the knee. I'm in between double glazing. Feel a lovely deep stretch of your hips and your waist. Holding the stretch, you're strengthening at the same time. Just come to a point that's good for you. You might be here, you might be here. But as long as you can feel your sweet spot. Squeeze the glutes, pull your belly button spine and lengthen back to center. And over to the other side, level one, protecting your lumbar spine on your hips. Or lengthen down the thigh, or level three. More, this is a lot more pressure on the lumbar spine, so you don't want to feel tension on the lumbar spine. Stick out that hip, lengthen, hold, and lengthen back to center, squeezing your glutes, pulling your belly button to the spine. And then just shake it out, so you should feel a bit more sort of warmed up and mobile now. So we're gonna step forward, come down to the mat, and we'll do a couple of spine stretches. So lengthen up, nice straight back. My feet are mat width apart. I'm going to either lengthen my arms up to the ceiling as we hinge forward. That's a little bit too uncomfortable. Walk your hands forward. You don't want too much pressure on the lumbar spine. I'm hinging forward. Flex those feet if you can. Arms are in line with my ears. Lengthen forward. Feel the length coming from the hips. So I'm being pulled by a piece of strength, but the length's coming from the hips. And then round and curl for those with no lumbar spine issues. Lumbar spine issues keep your back nice and straight. And you're being pulled by a piece of string. Think you can't come any further, but you can come an extra few millimeters. Then reset that spine one vertebrae at a time. One more. Either hold on to your hands or in between your legs. Level two, more pressure on the lumbar spine. So just be careful. I'm lengthening forward, nice straight back. Keep that straight back if you get tension in the lumbar spine. The rest of us are rounding and curling. Being pulled by a piece of string from the crown of the head. Take a breath. Actually, you can come an extra few millimetres. And the length comes from the hips. Flex the feet. Lovely stretch in the spine and the muscles in the back of the legs. And then see care of your spine. Pull your belly button spine and back to centre. Now we're going to try a new exercise. Well, no, I did this, I think, last year. I know I did it last year. So this is called the pelvic rollback. So can you see my knees are at about a 90 degree angle? I'm going to show you what we're going to do with or without the band. So we're going to straight back and we're going to pelvic curl roll back, either onto the ball or to your sweet spot and roll back up. So I'm rounding and curling down to the, my sweet spot or the ball. So it's up to you. Rounding and curling. Some of you won't even use a band, but keep those feet flexed because you're going to really work your quad quads today. So lengthen up. Either hold on to the band and have the ball behind your lumbar spine, but don't rely on the band and the ball. You want your core to be doing the work. So lengthen your arms forward. Now, the closer your legs are to your, the closer your feet are to your seat bones, harder it is. Now, the aim is about a 90 degree angle. If it's too much, extend your legs. So just feel nice and comfortable, straight back. So I'm rounding and curling, coming all the way down to the ball or the sweet spot. Pull, really think about pulling the belly button to the spine, flexing your feet. I'm feeling it in the quads now, my sweet spot. And then back to centre. Nice straight back. So rounding and curling, back to a nice straight back. Take a breath in so you breathe out, rounding and curling. All the way down to the sweet spot. Remember, the closer your feet are to your seat bones, the harder it is. Keep those feet, feet flexed and back to centre. So that makes it much harder if my feet are really close to my seat bones. Rounding and curling. Pull the belly button. Oh, that's too much. Pulling the belly button to the spine. Onto the ball or to your sweet spot. Really feeling that in the core. Okay, progression. Tabletop. Round and curling, left leg to table top. Remember, some of you are holding on to your band, but try to keep the feet flexed, swapping legs, extended leg, 
further progression. So you choose the level that's good for you. Bring my feet closer to my seat bends. Swap legs, tabletop or extended leg, or nothing at all. So we roll back to my ball, sweet spot. Holding on to that band or just lengthening your arms out at shoulder height. Let's just do a couple more. So my quads are aching now. My arms are aching, so they're lengthened out. Remember, flexing those feet. So I'm feeling it just in the quads. Rounding and curling. This is our final one. We might be doing the leg extensions. And back to centre. Let's extend our legs. Max width apart. Lengthen your arms up to the ceiling. If it's a bit too much, have your hands in between your legs and we hinge forward. Just spine stretch, flex the feet. Nice straight back. Round and curl for those with no lumbar spine issues. You can pull by a piece of string from the crown of the head and then C curve your spine. Really pull that belly button to the spine and back to centre. We're going to slowly roll down. You know how it works, either with assistance of your band. Level one, two, Three. really really slowly some of you might have your cheek cushion underneath your lumbar spine so i'm starting at level two remember you don't want to look at your elbows this time you're relaxing your feet and your legs lean back by an inch straight back and i'm tucking in my pelvis rounding my spine relax the feet pull the belly button to the spine Squeeze the glutes, scoop in the pelvis, trying to create that wheel. Slowly, slowly, slowly. If you find you come down really quickly, come back up and do another one. So I'm really working my core here, squeezing my glutes, rounding and curling my spine. You don't want to look at the elbows at level two and three. And then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side, crossing your ankles, pulling your knees apart, or remove your block, lengthen your legs up to the ceiling, slightly pushing into your hands, horizontal alignment, part your legs, mat width part, flex your feet, slowly roll down. I'm trying not to push into my hands too much now, so my core does the work. So you choose the level that's good for you. Keep on hugging the left leg, and lengthen the right leg away, hip flexor stretch, really relax, relax, relax. Left knee comes out to the side, thigh skins your rib cage. Hold on to your hamstring, calf muscle, your ankle, depending on your flexibility, and push your heel in up to the ceiling and start circling your ankle one way than the other. You can lengthen and lift your head and shoulders if you want to, a little bit more core work. That is a progression. Bend the knee, lengthen it away, right leg up to up, hugging your knees to your chest and lengthen through the hip joint. So really relax. Bring that right knee slightly out to the side, thigh skins your rib cage. You can feel a deeper stretch here in the hip flexors. Hold on to your hamstring. Your sweet spot might be there, might be slightly deeper, deeper. Remember, your sweet spot is personal. I'm pushing into my heel, circling my ankle one way. And then the other, floating up my head and shoulders is a progression. And back to centre. Bend your knees, tee your arms. Now lengthen your left leg away, tee your arms. Now I'm going to bring my right leg across my body, keeping my right foot behind my left knee. I'm going to, you might, if you want to, you can put some pressure on your left knee, on your right knee but keep those shoulders glued to the mat. Look in the opposite direction. So this is a nice spinal stretch. The aim is to keep the shoulders glued to the mat and try to get your knee onto the floor. Nice deep stretch for the spine. You don't have to put pressure on your knee. And lengthen, lengthen back center, bring your knee back center, but relax the knee, relax the leg, relax all the muscles. So it's your deep core muscles doing the work and swap over, lengthen the right leg away, bend the left knee, and my left knee comes over to the right, and can you see my left foot stays behind my right knee, shoulders glued to the mat, 
So my knee comes across my body, so I'm rotating my spine. So I'm, I'm tight at this side, so my knee doesn't touch the floor at all. And I'm looking in the opposite direction. And then back to centre, really relaxing the muscles, squeezing the glutes, pulling my belly button into the spine. Remove your block. We're just going to do a bridge. Now, some of you might want to try the pretzel bridge. This is a progression. So if you, if you can have, if, only if you want to, you can have your band nice and tight around your hips. Some of you might want to do the pretzel. So my right ankle is on my left thigh as we come up into the bridge. You've got to make sure you open up that knee, but that's a progression. If not, we do a regular bridge and water droplets down. So squeeze your glutes, push into the heel. I've got tension in the band there. Up to that perfect alignment. Some of you might do regular bridge. Some of you might be in pretzel. Up to your tiptoes, only if you want to. Lengthening your arms over your head or up to the ceiling. Imagine there's a water droplet in between your hips. And we slowly roll down one vertebra at a time, tucking on our pelvis, see here in our spine, as we roll the water droplet to the left and right hip, slowly rolling down. I'm just showing you at pretzel, but then remember pretzel's progression. Swap over legs if you're doing pretzel, left ankle on right thigh. I'm just gonna show you regular bridge. Sorry, I forgot to lengthen my arms down center. So push into the heel, squeeze the glutes, lengthen the knees away. I'm taking on tension in the back, so I've got a little bit more arm work there, creating tension, only if you want to. Up to your tiptoes, lengthen your arms up to the ceiling, maybe over your head. Some of you are at pretzel, so your left ankle is on your right thigh, but don't lose that alignment. And the water droplet rolls from the left to right hip as you're tucking in your pelvis, C curve in your spine. Keep those arms lengthen, and lengthen, and lengthen. And and lengthen your arms back to center. Hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. Or some of you might want to go a little bit further and do the classic Joseph Pilates rollover. Now back into position, we're going to interlace our fingers behind our head. And with this, you can have a band around your thighs. And we're going to do a crunch, opening the left and then the right knee and progression both knees. Now those who cannot bring float their head and shoulders off the mat, you're gonna lengthen your arms up to the ceiling, progression over your head, as you drop your right knee and left knees to the side. <sighs> Hardly any pressure. So that's those who cannot float their head and shoulders off the mat. Interlace your fingers behind your head. <sighs> Pelvis, horizontal alignment. Hardly any pressure under the soles of my feet. Take a breath in as you breathe out, you lengthen and lift your head and shoulders, orange underneath your chin. See if you can come as high as you can and drop your left knee out to the side without disturbing your pelvis. Hardly any pressure under the soles of your feet. And as you come down, bring your knee back to center. Take a breath in as you breathe out, float up your head and shoulders, and you drop your right knee out to the side, elbows open, trying to peel my shoulders off the mat, trying to get my chest as high as I can, hold that knee open and back to center. If it's too difficult to open up the knees, just do the regular crunch. Don't even incorporate the knees dropping to the side. It's just regular crunch, lengthening, lifting. If you want to progress, you do butterfly. So I'll drop both knees open, lengthen and lift. See if you can hold it for a couple of seconds and lengthen, lengthen back to center, really feeling it in the deep core muscles. So you choose the left, that's good for you. Don't even incorporate the legs if you don't want to. Lengthen the lift. Drop left knee to the side. And slowly lengthen back center. Can you see how slowly I'm going? My head is being pulled by a piece of string. Lengthen the lift, peeling my shoulders off the mat, dropping my right knee out to the side. And back to center. If you carry on doing that, or you can do double. So if you can hold it there for two to three seconds, trying to get my chest up to the ceiling and back to center. And those who find it struggle to get their head and shoulders off the mat, can you see what I'm doing? Now you've got hardly any pressure under the soles of your feet and that bowl of soup is on your pelvis. Just make it your final two, one either side or your final two doubles. 
Really see if you can hold it up there for two to three seconds. And then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. Or just do your Joseph Pilates classic roll over. Slowly roll down, feeling it in your deep core muscles. Now we're back into position. We're just going to do a full body stretch. Lengthen your toes and fingers away from each other. And then we come straight over to the side. So some of you can keep the bands on if you want to. So we're going to come to and do the side exercises, which is a version of the oyster. So make sure your head is on the side of your block, bend your knees in front, your arms are in, well, it doesn't matter what you do with your arms. You choose the arm position, that's good for you. Actually, I'm being silly. Take the block away, so level one, or you can come up onto your elbow. Or if it's more uh, comfortable, lie on your block. Now we're going to bend our knees in front. My shins are in line with the edge of the mat. I'm going to lengthen and lift my top leg, just above hip height, relax that foot. Lengthen out my leg. And I'm going to lengthen and lift my leg. And I'm going to pulse for five, three, no, five, four, three, two, one. It's Monday morning, lengthen, lengthen back centre. Switch off the muscles in the legs, bend the knee and back to centre. And again, I lengthen and lift just above hip height. Thighs of my pelvis stays completely vertical. I lengthen out my leg. Can you see my thighs are in alignment there? Relax that foot. And I see if I can lengthen it a bit higher. Bend the glutes and the thighs. Five, four, three, two, one. And lengthen back centre, just higher than hip height to my leg. Bend the knee. Can you see my thighs don't move? Knee to knee, foot to foot. You choose the arm position that's good for you. So I lengthen the lift. Thighs don't move, lengthen out my left. Thigh doesn't move, thigh still is in alignment. Lengthen, lift. Five, four, three, two, one. And lengthen, lengthen back centre. Switch off the muscles in the left. Bend the knee and back to centre. Let's do one more. Lengthen the lift. Lengthen out the left. Lengthen the lift. Glutes, thighs burning. Five, four, three, two, one and lengthen, lengthen back. So actually, let's do one more. One more. Relax the foot. Really relax the foot. Knee just above hip height. Can you see my thighs don't move? Lengthen out. Lengthen and lift. Five, four, three, two, one. And lengthen, lengthen back to centre. Bend the knee and then just pass it out. We're going to go into chalk circle, first of all, today. Two chalk circles, two open books. So you choose, first of all, chalk circle. I'm just going to use a weight. Now, you can keep that band on your thighs or around your ankles, chalk circle. So your leg is not going to move. So either keep your leg lengthened diagonally across, nice and rested, or you keep it lengthened and lifted at hip height. That's not hip height, hip height. Can you see my legs and hip? That's hip height. Chalk circle today. So I lengthen my top leg, top arm, longer than the bottom, and I draw a big chalk circle around my body. Head follows my hand. Don't scrape the weight off the floor. Keep the hand hovered about one inch off the floor. So you're really using the muscles in your waist. Keep that leg lengthened and lifted, lifted. You might have the bands around your ankles, so take on tension of the band. I'm drawing a big chalk circle around my body. Big, big, keeping that hand or that weight hovered. So my waist, my obliques are doing the work, keeping that weight lifted. We've done two. You're now going to drop the uh, band. Grab, keep holding the weight. We'll grab your band and we're going to do two open books with leg extension. So I lengthen my top arm longer than my bottom and I open up my book with or without a band, a weight or both. And you know how this one works. I'm going to increase my range of motion. 
So I can feel that's really tight now. And I'm going to close my book, keep my leg at hip height and swing my leg behind me. Lengthen, lengthen, opening up my hip flexors, feeling that in the glutes, relax your foot, lengthen your top arm longer than your bottom. And I swing my leg in front, increasing my range of motion. Already I'm so much more flexible, that's amazing on my second one. Lengthen your arms away from each other. So we're just doing two of these and swing your leg behind you. Lengthen and lift, bend the knee and just pat it out. Let's give our body a really nice stretch. So these with the band, you can put the band on, uh, the loop band back around your thighs. And we're going to do the bridge, remove the block. You choose if you want a, a, loop, a, a resistance band around your hips. And today we're going to drop our knee to the left and to the right in our bridge. Now progression, you do that at tabletop, drop it out to the left and then the right. So make sure your feet are close to your seat bones. Only if you want to, you can have the loop band around your thighs and the resistance band in your hands. Feet close to my seat bones, squeeze your glutes, lengthen your knees away. Taking on resistance to the band, come up onto your tiptoes only if you want to. Don't lose that alignment. Some of you will be holding onto your hips for support. So you drop your left knee out to the side. That knee might be at tabletop. Hold for a couple of seconds. Don't move your pelvis. And back to centre and over to the right. Hold for a couple of seconds. Hold, feeling it in the glutes. And back to centre. Lengthen those knees away. Lengthen the arms up to the ceiling or over your head. If it's too difficult to do this, keep on holding onto your hips as you drop your left knee to the side and your right knee to the side. Some of you might be doing this at tabletop. Ooh, I find that a little bit too tricky. So you choose the level that's good for you. Don't lose your full no mass alignment. Tuck in your pelvis, see care of your spine. Keep those arms lengthened over your head or up to the ceiling or you're holding onto your hips. And roll down one vertebrae at a time. Lengthen the arms back centre, lengthen, lengthen. Some of you might want to come into a crunch and then start that bridge again. Or some of you might want to come a little bit further, holding onto your hamstrings, coming up to your bent. Progression, lengthening your arms out to the side. And teaser, hold onto your hamstrings for support if you're wobbling all over the place. Nice straight back, bent. And slowly, slowly roll down. My band is nice and tight around my hips. You don't have to use any equipment at all. Squeeze the glutes, push into your heels. Lengthen your knees away. Only if you want to, come into your tiptoes. Nice straight alignment. Bring your left knee out to the side. Remember, this could be at tabletop. And right knee outside. Then drop your bottom or rock your hips. Keep those arms either holding onto your hips or lengthen them up to the ceiling, maybe a little bit further over your head, pulling the band apart, dropping your left knee to the side, holding for a couple of seconds. Nice stability. I'm thinking about squeezing my glutes, hips up to the ceiling, lengthening those knees away, tucking my pelvis. Pull that belly button to the spine. Either lengthen your arms back to centre, or you can try a crunch. Just finish off your final bridge for some of you, or some of you might come up to your final boat. Teaser. Some of you might be holding on to your hamstrings for support. Boat. And you're going to slowly, slowly roll down. Everyone hugging their knees to their chest. Slowly, slowly roll down. Hug the knees to the chest, cross the ankles, part your knees, and full body stretch. Lengthen, lengthen. Lengthen your toes and fingers away from each other, and we're going to roll on to the side and slowly get up, and we're going to come to the other side. So we're doing a version of the oyster. So you can choose if you want to keep the loop bands around your thighs. So you can either lie on your arm, you know how it works, or come up to your elbow, you bend your knees in front, shins are in line with the edge of the mat. 
So the top of my body double glazing, being pulled by a piece of string, chest out to the sun, pulling that belly button to the spine. And I float up my knee, just higher than hip, width, uh, just higher than hip height. Lengthen out my leg. You see my thighs are in alignment. They don't move. Then I lengthen and lift. Pelvis doesn't move, it's vertical. And I pulse for five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I can count now. And lengthen, lengthen back to centre. Just higher than hip height. Bend my knee. Can you see my thighs don't move? Relax, relax the muscles. And back to centre. Lengthen and lift. Just higher than hip height. Really relax the foot. I sort of have a kind of numbing feeling because I've totally switched off the muscles of my leg and I'm lengthening through the hips as much as I can. Five, four, pelvis doesn't move. Three, lengthen. Two, one. I think my counting went a little bit wrong there. Bend the knee and back to centre. If you want to progress, you can try on your elbow. This is a real glute burner. Pelvis, vertical, thighs in alignment. See, I'm, I've started doing that. You don't want to do that. Lengthen out the legs slowly. This is going to be a glute burn and a thigh burn. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax that foot. Lengthen, lengthen back to centre. All the rules apply. Always lengthening. Just see if my foot can touch the computer screen, lengthen. It's amazing, just doing that little bit of length, lengthening, really switched on the glutes. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's do one more, I'm gonna to have to do it lying down, my glutes are on fire. So float up, pelvis doesn't move, vertical, lengthen out, thighs are in alignment. Lengthen the lift. Really lengthening. Five, switch off the muscles. And lengthen back to centre. It's amazing. If I think about lengthening, relaxing that foot, I can really feel it in the glutes and I can really feel it in the thighs. And just pat it out. So we're in position. Some of you might want to put the loop band around your ankle, around your ankles, as we lengthen and lift our top leg diagonally across for our short circle. Now don't incorporate the leg if you feel your glutes have had enough. So you can either bend the knees, lengthen the lift, lengthen the top leg diagonally across, or if you want to torture yourself a little bit more, lengthen and lift it. Keep it static. Our arms are in front. I lengthen my top arm longer than my bottom, and I draw a big short circle around my body. Rotation of my upper spine, head follows my hand, so I'm looking at my pelvis, my pelvis has to stay vertical. Big short circle. Lengthen through the hip joint. Even if you're relaxing the leg, keep it lovely and lengthened. Keep that head glued to your block. That's two short circles. I'm going to grab my bands now. Stay in position. I'm going to move my, my loop band. And we're going to do two open books. Increasing our range of motion. Head follows my hand. Rotation of my upper spine. I'm really thinking about rotating my spine. So I lengthen and lift my leg. Don't drop the foot. Keep it at hip height. And increase your range of motion. Remember, you don't have to incorporate the leg. Your glutes have had enough. Swing that leg behind. One more, keep the arm lengthened. Leg lengthened. Increasing that range of motion. It's really nice deep stretch. Holding those stretches, strengthens. And bend the knee and just pass it down. We go straight into prone today, which is a, di a version of the diamond. So you're going to have your forehead on your diamond hands. You can choose to have a loop band around your ankles if you want to. And you can choose to have a resistance band in your hand. 
So I'm just going to, this involves, I'm going to show you, this is, it involves lateral flexion. So you're going to salute. And then can you see I'm flexing to the side as I lengthen my arm down my thigh. So I'm flexing to the side and back to center. So I salute, lengthen and lift. And then I'm flexing to the side. So it's a flex today. Last week we didn't do a flex. Today we're flexing to the side, really using the muscles in our waist, our glutes. So you've got your diamond. I'm going to take you through the progressions. Feet are max width apart. Push your pubic bone into the mat, pull your belly button to the spine. Classic diamond. Roll the marble forward with your nose, squeeze your glutes, lengthen and lift your head and sternum. Being pulled by a piece of string from the crown of the head, got hardly any pressure under the palms of my hands. So I'm really firing up the muscles in my upper back. This feels good for you? Stay at this level. Now, if you want to progress, glue your left hand to your forehead, lengthen and lift my head and sternum, gluing my left hand to my forehead. So your range of motion might be a couple of centimeters, a little bit more, and back to center. And then your right hand glue to your forehead, saluting, and back to center. Not incorporating the legs today, progression, squeezing my glutes, Salute, I'm lengthening my arms down to the side. I'm flexing to the side, looking at my left foot, lengthening my arm down my thigh, and lengthen, lengthen back to centre. Salute, lengthen and lifted, and down to the mat. You can incorporate a band. So, right hand glue to my forehead. Salute, pushing into my pubic bone, pulling my belly button to the spine, pushing into the back of my feet, on the tops of my feet, and now I'm flexing to the side, looking down at my right foot, lengthening my arms down my thigh, lengthen back to centre, and back to centre. Left hand glue to my forehead, lengthen and lift. Progression, lengthening, flexing to the side, looking at my left foot, lengthening, flexing my whole body to the side, feeling it in the obliques, and lengthen, keep lengthening, lifting. Really feeling that in the muscles in my back there. You want to progress double. Both hands stuck. And as I lengthen my right arm down my thigh, can you see my left hand lengthens out in front? Then lengthen back to centre, salute. Rest. Lengthen and lift. Lengthen in my arms. I'm still flexing to the side, feeling that in the obliques. Or you don't have to rest. Do your final one, either side. Or your final two doubles. I'm really looking down, flexing the top of my back. My torso to the side. And rest. Capital E, your arms. Rock your hips from side to side. Just releasing any tension you have in the lumbar spine. Now we're all going to come up to, no we're not, we're staying at capital E today. Staying at capital E. Our feet are still mat width apart. And we're going to do our spinal extension. And we're doing a slightly different lizard today. So cobra prep first of all, then lizard, then spinal extension. So I roll the marble forward, I lengthen the lift. Squeeze the glutes, pull your belly button to the spine, hardly any pressure underneath my hands. Now I feel like I'm pushing into my elbows, chest out to the sun, shoulders down my back pockets, gently extending my spine, and lengthen, lengthen back to centre. Something different today, we're incorporating your leg, only if you want to. Now lengthen and lift my head and stem, rolling that marble forward. Chest out to the sun, shoulders down my back pockets. Now I'm pushing into my left hand, looking over my left shoulder, looking at my left foot. Can you see I'm now flexing my right foot, bend my knee, opening up the hip flexor, stretching the quads, and I lengthen, lengthen back to centre. We do the other side, so roll the marble forward. Chest out to the sun, shoulders down the back pockets, pushing into my right hand, looking over my right shoulder, right hip glued to the mat, flexing my left foot. Really looking at my right foot, 
opening my hip flexor on the left side and lengthen, lengthen back to center. Everyone, we're going to, everyone, you can stay at capital E. So we're going to try and go into Cobra, unless you want to do a deeper spinal extension, putting your hands underneath your shoulders, elbows fully into your rib cage. So lengthen the lip, squeezing your glutes, pulling your belly button to the spine. Hardly any pressure underneath my hands at the moment. Now I'm pushing into my hands, chest out to the sun, shoulders down the back pocket. Squeeze the glutes, pull your belly button to the spine, or your hands are underneath your shoulders. Pelvis needs to stay glued to the mat. Elbows tucked into my ribcage and lengthen, lengthen back to center. Hands underneath your shoulders, everyone, and we're going to come into cat and cow. Roll into a fetal ball on the side for those uh, uh, who have knee issues. So we're going to start to our cat and cow. So we're going to do a cow first of all. Stick out your bottom. Now I'm lengthening my arms, uh, my neck forward, trying to get my shoulders in my back pockets, creating space between my shoulders and my ear. Lengthening my head forward, shoulders down my back pockets, keep creating that space. Now I'm pushing into my palms, rounding and curling my spine cat. So you are floating your knees one or two centimeters off the mat. Pull that belly button to the spine. You might find it more comfortable to tuck your toes under. So a little bit more core work as we stretch our spine there. Another cow. Stick out your bottom. Squeeze the tennis ball between your shoulder blades. And I'm lengthening my head forward. So being pulled by a piece of string and shoulder blades going down my back pockets, creating space between my ears and my shoulders. Round and curl, pushing into the palm, squeezing the glutes, floating up those knees for some of you, a little bit more core work. And back to centre. We're doing classic swimming today. So you can do this at prone. So lengthening, lifting opposite leg and arm, but we're holding it. And it's kind of going to be your own personal challenge. So you can choose if you want a loop band in your hand, and you can choose if you want um, a loop band around your, so some of you have, might have ankle weights, but can you see uh, the loop band? We're going to hold it. So you can choose if you want any equipment at all, but we're holding it, own personal challenge. I'm going to see if I can hold it up there for five to six seconds. Total stability. Some of you might want to balance the ball. Oh, that one's quite inflated, it's going to fall. Okay, so slowly lengthen leg and arm. Either just try to hover it off the mat, they aim this hip height, shoulder height, with or without the equipment. That's too hard with the band there. We're going to hold for five, four, a personal challenge, then come to the other side. But my aim is five to six seconds, and back centre. Maybe try and balance the ball. Lengthen either leg and arm, taking a bit of pressure out your toe and fingers, or the aim is shoulder height, hip height. Lengthen. Switch off the muscles, but try to touch something with your toes and something with your fingers. Pulling your belly button to the spine. And slowly, slowly back to centre. Maybe you can hold it there for 10 seconds. This can be done at plank. If Susie is online, you're lengthening out your leg to hip height and holding for maybe eight seconds. You might be able to try and lengthen out opposite arm. Lengthen. And keep on doing that. I'm just going to show plank if anyone wants to do plank. Don't stick out your bottom. Lengthen. Five, four, three, two, one. And then you do your legs and then you do your arms, but maybe for a few extra seconds. Maybe you can do your leg and arm together. Let's just do a few more. Five, four, three, two, one. It's complete stability. It will really help if you balance a ball on your lumbar spine. It's all about complete stability. This is the final one. Total stability, really works your deep core muscles there. Really good one, especially with those with lumbar spine issues. 
If, you're, if your knees can be mat width apart, gluing your big toes together, come into a child's pose, lengthening your arms forward, pushing your chest into the mat. If it's too uncomfortable to totally bend your knees, this is called puppy dog. Can you see my knees are at a 90 degree angle? You can come into puppy dog. Rest your forehead on the mat and just massage it. Now walk over to 10. Right hand sits on left. Lengthen those arms, especially the right. Walk back to 12. Still lengthening. Crumb sits on the heels, pushing your chest into the mat. And over to two. Left hand sits on right. Lengthen, lengthen, feeling a lovely deep stretch down the left side. Step over to 12, then C care of your spine. Pull the belly button to the spine and really C care of the spine and come to four point kneeling. So we're doing the classic thread the needle. And some of you might want to just get a little bit more extension. So with or without the band, you're going to make sure you're not sticking out your hips. It's really important when you lengthen out, you don't do this. You keep your hips nice and flat. With or without the band, make sure you're stacked. Lengthen your right arm out to the side or up to the ceiling. Your range of motion, don't stick out that hip. Push into the supporting hand, the left hand. Squeeze the tennis ball between your shoulder blades and lengthen, slowly lengthen back to centre. Lengthen, lengthen. Don't bend the arm yet. Then the right hand threads underneath the left, pushing into the left hand. Now, can you see, I'm going to try and walk my hand up in front and have my arm rested on my ear. It just opens up my chest a little bit more. You don't have to do it if it's too uncomfortable. Walk your hand back. And before we unthread, some of you might want to lengthen and lift your left leg. Swing it out to the side as you unthread. Out to the side or up to the ceiling. Push them into the left hand. Keep that leg nice and straight. Some of you might want to try and extend that left leg. If you're not using your leg, keep those hips nice and straight. Don't stick out your hip and lengthen, lengthen back to centre. We do the other side. Left arm out to the side or up to the ceiling. Really think about keeping the hips square. Doesn't matter if your arms here, here, it's your range of motion. Keep the hips nice and square. Rotation of your upper spine. And lengthen, lengthen back to centre, pulling the belly button to the spine. Feeling it in my obliques now, relax that hand and lengthen through the shoulder joints. Left hand, threads underneath right. Some of you might want to see, can you see what I'm doing? Walking my right hand and I'm resting my arm on my ear. It just opens up my chest a little bit more. Walk your hand back. Some of you might want to lengthen and lift that right leg. Remember it's progression. Some of you might want to swing it out to the right. As we unthread, out to the side, or to the ceiling, with or without small equipment. Don't stick out the hips. Lengthen, lengthen back to centre. Lengthen. And back centre, bring your foot in, and then we're going to slowly roll down. Oh, we've got plenty of time. Oh, I do have a few extra. An extra, we've got, we've got about 11 minutes. Okay, we're going to slowly roll down. Level, uh, you ha have the assistance of the band, you know how it works. Lengthen your arms out in front. Level two or three, nice and slowly. Lean back, balance. Tuck in your pelvis, C care of your spine. Really relax. Pull that belly button to the spine. Slowly relax. Your feet slowly roll down, really creating a C curve, teaching your spine to be flexible. Some of you might have that cheek cushion just near your lumbar spine.
and then hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. Well, some of you might want to go a little bit further. I'm trying not to push into my hands too much. I'm letting my core do the work. Matt Whipper, flex your feet. Try not to push into my hands and let my core do the work. Some of you can just try. It doesn't matter if you come this much. It doesn't matter. Even if it doesn't matter if you come by a couple of inches. You find you increase your range of motion over time. So we're just going to do flex and points. Now you can do this with one or two legs. So you're in position, you choose the arm position. That's good for you. You know how it works, flex and points. So we're gonna bring both knees up to the top and we're gonna lengthen our legs up to the ceiling. But it doesn't matter if you can, do, uh, if you have what can, if you just use one leg and we swap over, aim is two. So we're gonna synchronize the movement with our breath. Take a breath in, so you breathe out, you flex. Breathing in your toes, blowing them away. Flex. Breathing in your toes, blowing them away. Now the aim is to lower the legs to a point that's good for you. One or two legs. Blowing your toes away. Breathing them back in. You choose the arm position that's good for you. Breathing my toes in. Remember, Blowing them away. Remember, you can always progress. So you might progress here, get tired, and just come and um, reduce your progression. So I'm having a little rest, then I'm going to lower my legs to a point that's good for me. This I find far easier than this. So if you if your legs lengthen sort of just one or two inches off the mat, just lift them a little bit more. So we're flexing and pointing. Swap over legs for some of you. Flexing. Breathing in and pointing. Let's just do a couple more. Then have your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. Just one more little exercise, just you're at tabletop. This one we've done before. You choose the arm position that's good for you. And you, it's, you've got hardly any pressure under the soles of your feet. Flex and point goes with these two go together, these movements. And you see, I've got hardly any pressure pulling my belly button spine, hardly any pressure under my left foot. And I lengthen my leg away and slowly back centre. Can you see my thighs are in alignment? And I lengthen my left knee away. Flex and points in this exercise generally go together and back to center. You choose the arm position that's good for you. Take the pressure out the soles of your feet. This is really difficult for me because I'm pulling my belly button spine, thinking about melting my rib cage into the mat, lengthening my leg. And it's the pressure I've taken away from the soles of my feet that make it really difficult. But if you find it too easy, double. I'm fine, I can't do double. If you get the technique right with this one, you can really feel it. Let's make one more either side. Lengthen, or your final two doubles. Remember, you're always lengthening through the joints. Final one, hug your knees to your chest and rock from side to side. Or some of you might do the rollover. And then we stretch it out, so grab your band. Put the band underneath the arch of your right foot. Left leg is bent or lengthened, depending on your flexibility. You're going to push into your heel, doesn't matter if your range of motion is here, just as long as you can feel that sweet spot, pushing into your heel, hugging your lengthened leg to your chest. Now you're going to really relax your foot, relax your leg, tee your left arm, and I'm lengthening my leg out to the right. Relax and lengthen through the hip joint. It's all in the core now. Lengthen, even though I can feel the stretch. 
and lengthen, lengthen back to center. Relax the leg, relax the foot, pull the belly back. It's all in my pool now because I've totally relaxed that leg. Put the band in the left hand to your right and keep on lengthening. And lengthen back to center. Totally switch off those muscles. It's all in my glutes now. And we swap over. Right leg, bent or lengthen, depending on your flexibility. And I'm pushing into my heel. Doesn't matter if your range of motion is here, here, here. You want to feel your sweet spot. Pushing into my heel. Nice deep stretch. Muscles in the back of my legs. Relax that foot to your right arm. Relax the leg completely. Lengthen through the hip joint. And lengthen back to centre, pulling that belly button to the spine, squeezing the glutes. Bound the right hand to your left. Look in the opposite direction. And lengthen back to centre. Here, a form is stretch, left ankle and right thigh. Really hug the knee to the chest. So here, it stretches the left glutes and a tiny little muscle that sits underneath your gluteus minimus called the piriformis. And that sits very closely to your sciatic nerve. So if you've got a sl slightly swollen piriformis, it can hit the sciatic nerve and give you sciatica. So this one's a really good one to do. Nice stretch. Keep it stretched out. If you can lengthen your legs up to the ceiling, right ankle and left thigh, you'll get there any way you can. Feeling a nice deep stretch in the right glute and the piriformis. Really relax. Just drop your feet, remove your block, get your ball. We're going to press into the ball for eight. Just releasing tension you hold in the head, neck and shoulders. Remember that chin tuck, that double chin. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, you push. And release. And again, take a breath in. As you breathe out, you push. And release. And one more, take a breath in. As you breathe out, you push. And release. Just roll your head from side to side. Really relax the muscles in your neck. And let the ball deepen the stretch in the neck. Breathing continuously. And back to center. When you're ready, you gently roll to the side, get yourself to seated, breathing continuously, slowly, slowly. Do a seated little spine twist. We, we did this last week. So you hug your left knee to your chest. You hold on to your left, either hold on to your left knee, or if you can get your elbow there, great, but you can hold on to your left knee. I'm going to lengthen my arm up to the ceiling and over. Now rotating my spine, placing my hand behind. Can you see I'm holding onto my knee? If you can press your elbow into your knee, great. You choose the level that's good for you. Keep on lengthening and lifting. Look over that shoulder and back to center. Can keep weighted on your seat bones and see if you can just bring your hands across your body. I'm weighted on my seat bones. So I'm feeling and see if you can come down. Just keep the weight on both seat bones. Little stretch and back to center. We swap over, keep that leg in. You don't want to drop this out. Either hold on to your knee, your right knee, or put your elbow 
against your right knee. Lengthen up, lengthen your hand up behind. We're going to pull back piece of spring. See if you can lengthen up. Look over that shoulder. Come back to centre, staying weighted on my seat bones. I'm going to rotate and I'm going to try and get my chest down to the mat. But it's, it's, didn't drop out that knee, I did. I'm staying weighted on my seat bones. And back to centre. We're all going to come to four point kneeling. Tapping your toes under, come up with a straight back, those with any lumbar spine issues. Hold on to your weights if you want to roll up with weights. Flate stance, pushing into your heels, tailbone up to the ceiling, micro bend in the knees. Then pull by a piece of string, really feel the stretch and the muscles in the back of the legs. Really let the top of your body hang. I'm squeezing my glutes, pulling my belly button to the spine. C curve in my spine, restacking my spine one vertebra at a time. Really teaching my spine to be flexible, then still working my deep core muscles. And back to standing, some little arm circles. Stay on the soles of your feet or come up to your tiptoes. You can drop the weights if you want to. Squeezing your shoulder blades together, my arms come slightly behind, or you can stay on your tiptoes. Think about that stability. Just one more. Lengthen. And back to centre. And thank you.